everybody, it's Becky. Welcome back to my channel. I have another homeschooling video for you guys, and today I'm going to be sharing four homeschooling mistakes that I have made that I learned from and I wish I had known before I started homeschooling. So if you want to hear those four things, then stay tuned. So the first thing that I wish I had really known and understood when we first started homeschooling is you don't have to finish every lesson of every book that's okay, whether it's too easy and your child already knows that, or it's too hard and you wanna skip it and come back to it later, or for whatever the reason is that you may wanna go out of order, or just skip some of the lessons all together and maybe do them next year or whatever. There are different reasons why you may wanna skip lessons in the book, but it's okay. You don't have to finish every single book start to finish if it doesn't meet your needs or your child's needs. So just keep that in mind. Give yourself a little bit of grace and freedom in that way. Don't stress out about it if you don't finish every single lesson in a book. The second thing that I wish I had known when I started homeschooling is you don't have to have every single thing prepared before the new homeschool year starts. Yes, you've got to be prepared for certain things. You have to pick your curriculum and what days you're going to school and things like that and kind of get that stuff organized, maybe a lesson plan if you want to do that. But you don't have to have every lesson plan done for the entire year before the school year starts. You know, you can work on those things as the school year goes along. So yes, you're going to want to have a bulk of your work done. And you may want to have like maybe six weeks of lesson planning done if you lesson plan. But you don't have to have it all done before the school year starts. So don't stress yourself out thinking every single thing has to be done before you start because it doesn't. You can definitely work on it as the year goes on. Now I do a bulk of our homeschooling prep during the summer because I, I don't wanna have to stress out about it too much during the school year, but I also don't wanna ruin my summer with like nonstop homeschooling crazy prep mode. So I try to keep it a nice balance and I always do a deep clean and reorganization of our homeschool room in the summer. I will finalize any curriculum choices sometimes over the summer if I need to, sometimes I don't need to. Sometimes I know what we're gonna use the next year before the current year even ends. But making those things making sure i get those things done and prioritize you know the most important things get done first and then everything else you could do as time goes on the third mistake that i made is kind of funny i literally had my oldest daughter punching a time clock when we first started homeschooling and i looked at our state's requirements and it says six hour days and i thought literally she had to do six hours a day so I would make her like check in and check out. And then at the end of every day, we were like furiously adding up her time to see, did she get six hours? She didn't get six hours today. Now we're behind. Like I didn't realize that it's instructional time, instructional days. So now we just go based on the 177 instructional days that our school requires um, or our, our uh, county and state requires. We do 177 days whether that's four hours, five hours, three hours, however long it takes her to get her work done is however long we school. I am not trying to you know, squeeze six hours of work out of her every day because as a homeschooler, you will learn if you haven't already, it's, you'll be very hard pressed to maybe sit there every single day for six hours and still have work to do. I mean, there's not distractions like you have in public school. There's not bathroom breaks and there's not unnecessary like things going on that waste time. You know, you can really focus on what you gotta get done, get it done, and you're done. I mean, that's really the joy of homeschooling. You don't have a lot of that downtime that goes on in public school. So you can get your work done a lot faster. And the fourth mistake that I made back in the beginning when we first started homeschooling was not counting ex uh, educational trips and outings as school. I've seen kids at Disney World plenty of times. Do I count Disney World as a school day when we're there? No. But like if we go to the zoo or the aquarium or we take a family field trip somewhere, definitely count that as school. It counts just because you may not be with a group when you're doing it. There are educational experiences that definitely should be counted as school. And if you wanna make it more educational, then you can tie in some lessons with it. So if you go to the aquarium, you know, have them maybe pick out one fish that they saw at the aquarium and the next day they can do a little project or a report about it. You know, you can definitely tie things in like that, but don't forget to count those educational experiences and trips as school. And that even counts learning to iron, learning to cook, learning how to do laundry. Those are all life skills that your child is going to need that would count as, an home, as a home economics type of uh, lesson. So definitely count those things uh, as part of your school. I, I hope you guys enjoyed hearing my four homeschooling mistakes that I made that I wish that I had known when I started homeschooling. Hopefully it was helpful to you guys. And if, if you already are homeschooling, maybe you've done some of these things as well. And if you are new to homeschooling or you're just thinking about it and just starting out, hopefully you will learn a little bit from my past experience of some things to not stress out quite so much about. 
and hopefully it was helpful to you guys. If you want to see my homeschooling playlist, I have it linked for you guys in the description box. Every single homeschooling video I have ever made is in that playlist. So if you want to see all those videos and look for some more homeschool inspiration, then definitely check out that link in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you want to see two of my older videos, you can click the links right here. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, and you definitely should, you can click right here. I upload every single week. I have some links in the description box for some of my favorite stores and products, as well as my PO box address. Check out those links if you're interested in those. And I will see you guys in the next video.